Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we have a hands-on Excel tutorial for you guys. We're gonna show you guys how to use Excel to organize your expenses, revenues, transfers, or all of your transactions as a business, which can help you file for taxes. Now, a quick disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only, and we recommend reaching out to a legal or tax expert when preparing to file your taxes. Now, before we jump into the video, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the very first thing you may wanna do is to go ahead and export your data from your bank. I'm not gonna do this in this video for privacy reasons. However, it's usually pretty simple to set a date range in your bank account and then export that as a CSV, which is exactly what we've done here. So once you have that file, that's gonna be a summary of all of my tra uh, transfers, debits, credits, refunds, etc. All right, now instead of using my actual bank account records, I've actually just downloaded a sample from online. It will essentially be the exact same thing, but I just don't wanna show my actual transactions. So we're gonna use this as our demonstration and I'll explain what to look for when it comes to actually doing this yourself. Cool, so we have the date column. You may also see an account number column and you could separate that if you're doing multiple accounts into one sheet. So we have that, we have deposits, withdrawals, and our balance, okay? Now the very first thing that we're gonna do here before we get too far along is I'm actually just gonna clean up the spreadsheet. So I'll select the very first row and I'll click insert. And maybe I'll just insert three of those above and that way I can have a few lines here. All right, so I'm gonna put my company name, comma, let's say it's a limited liability company. We might do something like that. And then if I just click and drag over here, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. So I'll click Merge and Center, Control B, Control U. That's to bold and underline. And then I might fill with uh, just a light blue color or something like that. Okay, I'm also gonna enter tax analysis followed by the tax year. We'll pretend like we're doing 2023 taxes. Now with these, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll go ahead and merge and center the cells. I might want to bold these. And I'd like to actually have another row above this just to help create that separation. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna bold and italic R categories here. Again, that's Control B, Control I. I'm using Tab to get to the cell to the right. All right, and then I'm also going to use the grab the B column here and just drag this out a little bit. I wanna be able to see these descriptions. Okay, so the descriptions are important pieces of information. And then again, we have our deposits and our withdrawals. Now, anything that has the symbols here, we're gonna fix this. So I'll start by doing some basic formatting. So I'll select the first of the dates under the date, and then I'm gonna press Control, Shift, and Down arrow. This is gonna select the remainder of the column that has values, so a nice little keyboard shortcut there. Okay, so here on the Home tab now, where it says Number, I'm gonna click down to expand that little menu there. And then I'm gonna select Date, and we need to pay attention to which format the spreadsheet was already in, which I believe it was the six character one. Uh, actually, let me see before we do that. Okay, so this is an eight character date format. So control shift down arrow to select it all. I'll click here to expand the numbers. Click on the date again. Okay, so this one at the top, I believe should work. So we'll click that. All right, now we can see all of our dates in the correct format. I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'll click this top one, control shift down. I'm simply just gonna click the dollar sign. And I'll do the same thing for the withdrawals, dollar sign again, and then same thing for balance. Again, we're on the home tab here and we're just formatting this data to make it a little bit easier to interpret. All right, so here is where the fun begins. So I'm gonna highlight our column B here. I'm gonna insert another column and I'm gonna call this classifications. Now the purpose of this is to separate my revenue, my expenses, as well as transfers Okay, so we want to separate these things so that we can easily calculate sums. It'll give us a good idea of how much is coming in, how much is going out, and where that actual profit number is as well. All right, so our spreadsheet is already looking a little bit better. Now, instead of manually filling out the classifications, we're gonna use the sort tool to actually do it for us, or at least kind of help streamline the process. So go to the data tab. We're gonna select our column here that has the descriptions, and then we'll click filter. And now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna look for some commonalities in the descriptions that might indicate which classification it is. 
So for example, Stripe is going to be revenue. So what I can do here, instead of just typing revenue next to all the boxes that say Stripe, I can click this little drop down arrow underneath the description. And then in text filters, I'm going to select contains and we're going to type Stripe. All right, and then it's going to filter based on the boxes that say Stripe and those only and nothing else, which is great. In the top one here, I'm going to type revenue. And then I'll click this and drag it down to the bottom column here, which is 91. And then I can simply just click the filter here and say clear filter from description. Now we can see anything that has Stripe on it will also have revenue next to it. Now let's go ahead and just continue down the list here. So payroll, that is probably an expense. So I'll go ahead and filter this for We can also just click directly in here because these are the same, but more than likely in your bank statements, you're looking for like a little commonality in the text because it's not just gonna say payroll or purchase. It's gonna, it's gonna have a description of the merchant or um, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more involved. And so just kind of look for the same things and you can use those to um, go ahead and filter. So here we'll do payroll. We're gonna classify this as an expense. Again, we'll drag and all the way down. Okay, clear this filter again. And we're just gonna keep going down the line and figuring out what this is. So for example, I know commission, to me that sounds like revenue. All right, so I'll go ahead and filter everything here by commission, and then we'll drag the revenue down. I'll clear again. Miscellaneous, uh, now that's a bit of a tougher one to answer, so we could even create a different classification uh, titled, you know, miscellaneous or something like that, and we could go through it later. Uh, let's just say that I know that these are miscellaneous business expenses, and so I'll just go ahead and call these an expense. So I will filter for that. All right, dragging the expense down in the classifications column. We'll clear this again, and I'm just gonna repeat this for everything. All right, now one important note to make is that you're probably gonna have a lot of transfers. Whether this is an external transfer or a transfer to savings or something like that is something you'll have to determine. So I'm gonna filter for anything that says transfer. Now in my actual spreadsheet here, I was able to determine based on the description whether it was going to my savings account or whether it was an external transfer, meaning it was an owner distribution. And so that's an important distinction to make, which we're not gonna make it here because we don't have that information. So I'm just simply gonna put transfer and I will be excluding this from our expenses and revenue. So transfer and you know you might be putting owner distribution or something like that. But again, for now, I'm just gonna leave this as transfer. I have another category here, ATM, and I'm just gonna classify this as an owner distribution. Let's say I'm paying myself in cash through an ATM. Uh, so that's going to be my owner distribution. Okay, we'll clear this filter. Let's see if I've missed anything. We have property mortgage. That's an expense. Go ahead and select that. Again, there are kind of particular instances whether or not you might be able to classify something as an expense. So please try not to copy exactly what I'm doing. The goal here is just to show you how to use Excel as a tool to help organize and resolve your finances. All right, we have debit card. These are probably just random um, revenues here. Call it from like Venmo and stuff like that. So we'll fill that out. And then let's see what else we're missing here. So we still have tax. And I think that might be it. Yeah, it looks like we just have to do the tax one. Now, just for simplicity's sake, again, I'm going to call this an expense, but not everything will be simple as expense or revenue. Again, you'll just have to do your own research and figure out what everything is. All right, guys, so I have filled out all of my descriptions simply by sorting how we were just doing it. Again, these are outrageous numbers and not realistic at all. Um, but the purpose here is just to show you guys you can sort these things and you can filter these things, which will make your life a lot easier and can help you actually keep pretty good track of your expenses and revenues. So what we can do at this point is we can actually go ahead and sort our classifications. So again, we've used our filter tool. So I'll do control shift down again on the classifications here. And then in the data tab, I'm going to click sort. We can go ahead and expand the selection. And then we're going to sort by classifications. And then we'll go with cell values A to Z, which means it's going to sort it alphabetically. Okay, so now it's going to be all of our expenses, then all of our owner distributions, then revenues, and then transfers. All right, so we're getting to a pretty good place now. And the next thing I might want to do here is I'm going to go 
from largest to smallest in terms of transactions for each category. Okay, so we have them sorted by expenses. And now what we're going to want to do is sort by withdrawals, sell values, largest to smallest. Okay, so now it's still all of the expenses, but we go from highest number to lowest number. For the owner distribution section, I'm going to skip that because some of them are withdrawals and some of them are credits. And some of them are deposits. So we'll leave that alone. I'm going to do the same thing for revenue though. So I'll select all the revenues. Now when I click sort here, I'm actually going to be sorting by the 245 value, which is the correct column. And then we'll go largest to smallest and we'll press OK. All right. And now we're going from our largest transaction to the smallest. And again, I'll go ahead and leave the transfers alone. Now, next, I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and insert. So I'm going to separate my expenses from my revenues. So I'll just create three blank cells here. I'll do the same thing above my revenue. I'll do the same thing below the revenues. All right, so next, I'm just going to calculate some basic totals. So we'll do expense totals. And then here I can just do a simple sum equation. We'll do an open parentheses and we can drag down the entire range of withdrawals for our expenses. So there we go. Press enter. Okay, I'm gonna select these two and we're gonna bold them. And then I'm gonna put a red highlight behind them so they're a little bit easier to stand out from the data. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing under our revenues. So equals sum, open parentheses, and we'll drag our entire range this time on this column. It's going to automatically slow down as you get towards the bottom. Press enter. We'll bold these and then I will we'll highlight these green. All right, I'm going to copy these and maybe we'll, you know, make a little table um, here towards the top. All right, now I've just done the same thing here. Um, so we can basically calculate um, kind of a general profit here. Okay, so our profit simply going to be our revenue minus expense. So, so you can equal I2 minus I3. Okay, we can bold that and fill this as well. All right, so at this point, there is still plenty of work to be done. However, a lot of the hard work is out of the way, and I really hope that you guys were able to find some use out of this. For me personally, I would then go into all of the expenses and make various subcategories from those. And then I might even add a receipts column with hyperlinks to receipts or something along those lines. And then I'll just present all of this to my CPA. So I kind of get it ready. And then I have somebody double check my work who's a professional so that you don't cause any issues. So again, you could go through all of your expenses here and then you could further use the filter tools to go ahead and figure out, okay, well, what kind of expense is this? And you might use some of that data here just to go ahead and separate everything out. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's video. If you found this helpful, a like and subscribe would go a long way in helping to support the channel. If you have any questions about anything we did in this video, drop those in the comments and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows Server, Windows 11, Windows 10, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. We strongly encourage any specific video topic ideas that you may have. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys next time.